Paris Agreement on the blockchain. That's our, our tagline out in the world. Of course, there's many layers of the onion and it's much more um, specific and nuanced than that. Um, but really, we're putting the Paris Agreement on the blockchain, connecting the national carbon accounts of all of the world to enable cross-border collaboration on emission reductions. We're an open source public platform on the Ethereum blockchain, and our task is to enable the issuance and exchange the movement of internationally transferred mitigation outcomes. Now, we're here at this COP largely in part to support the negotiators and cheer for the negotiators and shout for the negotiators um, to come to agreement on Article 6, this last critical piece of the Paris Agreement um, that allows for the, cre the investment in emission reduction outcomes in one country and the movement of them to another. Um, and I believe that, that the Paris process and the promise of Paris is hindered until we have that tool. Can, can I get you to go back one slide? Um, so really what we're trying to do here um, is, is create a tool to stand in for the role that the CDM's international transaction log did under the Clean Development Mechanism, which was to track corresponding adjustments between carbon inventories. Um, so I, I think it's fairly clear, but if, if you're going to do an emission reduction in, in country A um, and lower their emissions, that will show up on their national inventory. That shows up in science. That's reality. If they are to then package and transfer that emission reduction outcome to another country, they need to have a way to that other country, who of course will want to reduce their own emissions uh, on their inventory, they need to have a way to then put those tons back on country A's inventory. And it seems like a small detail amidst all of the other very complicated things, um, but we really saw that, that this small detail has the potential to really delay and um, block full um, operationalization of Article 6 and that transfer of, of ITMOs. Um, so we need to enable that double entry bookkeeping and it's very critical. Um, I guess I've kind of covered that, but it, it's funny, right? It's the IT in, in ITMO, it's the internationally transferred portion of this. And um, I, we've got to spend some time here at COP25 in Madrid um, speaking with the smartest people around that aren't in the negotiating table around Article 6 and uh, I still am waiting <laughs> to be proved wrong or have somebody say, Joseph, don't worry, we've got this solved. Um, but really what I glean is that, that this is not solved. This has been set as something that we'll do once Article 6 is complete. Um, and so, uh, to put it optimistically, it's great to be working on this hopefully in stream so that we can solve this problem and not create a lag from a hopeful agreement in a couple days' time. Um, to when people can really start using this tool. Uh, I actually, last night at the Canadian reception, got to speak with a gentleman whose name I had forgotten, but I spoke with at COP24. And he um, used to work on the international transaction log, and he no longer does, and so he says, caveat, maybe things are different. But his feeling is that it would take at least another three years from the finalization of Article 6 Paris Rulebook until we had something like an international transaction log um, to enable these transfers. And, and clearly, with the climate emergency upon us, that's not soon enough. Um, fortunately, and I think apropos to many of you in this room who have been focusing on blockchain as a piece of the puzzle to solve these problems, um, blockchain in its sort of most essential sense makes a lot of, um, a lot of sense for creating something that enables the unique digital scarce creation of one individual unit uh, amongst millions and billions of trillions of units and track it from its creation, its movement, and its ultimate retirement. Um, and so uh, we're lucky to have all of the people working on blockchain in this room and around the world creating these systems, trialing them, um, making incredible memes, um, and, and really working hard to try to make this work. And so that's really our task. We're building um, a central hub 
uh, hopefully for the decentralized issue of Article 6.2 ITMOS. Um, next slide, please. So we'll get a little bit into the blockchain architecture before we go deeper into the climate architecture. And it's, it's really neat to sit with sort of two geekeries of, of climate geekery that I've got to spend time in and grow <laughs> for the last 15 years. Um, and blockchain geekery that, that I'm two and a half years in since falling down the rabbit hole, as many of you probably did as well. Um, and so we'll, we will be showing a demonstration of the front end of our platform, a sort of simplified version that I think shows hopefully quite clearly what we're trying to do. Um, and we're really sort of kicking off a pilot uh, of, of the, the, the climate concept of this, and then we'll be working to build um, and pull in some of the disparate pieces of the back end to connect to this um, and make it all real and get trades happening. Um, and so I, I did want to have that caveat um, that we are still in that building phase uh, and uh, we are really eager and happy to be embarking on it with some significant clarity around what we need to build to, to, to answer the climate question at hand. So the way we envision our platform is that it's built on a proof of authority side chain of Ethereum. Um, in some cases, people are very concerned that, you know, are you putting Paris Agreement on Bitcoin that uses all the power of Denmark? Um, at, no, we're not doing colored coins. Uh, we're not building this on that. And interestingly, we're building it, uh, and thanks to, you know, the lateness of the day, it actually may never touch a proof of work um, blockchain, which has its pros and its cons. Um, but we're building our system as a proof of authority side chain of Ethereum. So the idea here is, is that we can build a, a shard or a side chain um, that we are able to build the details of and inform the details of. We're really excited because of the concept and the, the mirroring of um, how we would build this and the UNFCCC. We really see our mission broadly as understanding as best as possible what's being negotiated for the Paris Agreement within the UNFCCC process, manifesting it on the blockchain, and then reinserting it into the UNFCCC process, um, at the very least into countries' processes, and if we should be so fortunate, actually back in as an official tool. Um, and so we want to host um, 196 nodes, potentially, one for every country in the world, um, where each country will have that advanced oversight of, of controlling and securing the network um, and, and, and feeling at home, feeling non-strange in a confederacy so much like the UNFCCC, which also, cutely enough for the verbiage, operates on consensus. Um, and so we see having these nodes um, that really carry, carry the framework that we're building here. Um, and then that will have a level of security. We'll make it as secure as we can with the brilliant people that we can get involved. But what we plan to do is have that proof of authority chain check back to the Ethereum main chain and basically snapshot the current state of the proof of authority network onto the Ethereum mainnet. Um, we don't know what the right time frame for optimization of that security is, but the reason we do that is so if there was a security breach within the proof of authority, um, then we can always rewind that minute or hour or half day or day to the last point that we touched in on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, we'll see how it all goes and hopefully there never would be a breach of our POA network, but if there was, um, it'll have that backstop. And so as we you know, deal with what is the architecture that we need to create, to properly do this and to get that buy-in, um, this is how our sort of security thinking is coalescing. Um, who here has heard of CryptoKitties? Okay, who here owns CryptoKitties? All right, um, well, if anybody wants a CryptoKitty, we can, and you have an Ethereum address or, or you can set one up, we'd love to send you a CryptoKitty. CryptoKitties are, a breed, are adorable, breedable kittens on the blockchain. Uh, they, they come out of Dapper Labs in a group in Vancouver, British Columbia, where we are. Um, and what's so fascinating about them and what um, allowed us to see 
how we would manifest this very clear opportunity to operationalize Article 6 on the blockchain was that you can see each of these kitties manifested um, actually in a lot of blockchain wallets now and also on their website, but their underpinning, their smart contract, um, actually lays out eight key pieces of data coding for the shape of their eyes, the color of their fur, the background of the picture that they have, and then below the picture, they have each of these things in their order and they lay out and say the different things like tangerine and purple and otaku. Um, and this created the big aha because as a carbon market guy, as a, a offset project developer for most of my time in this space, I know that the value of an offset and hence the value of a credit and the value of an ITMO is really based on it's information, it's an intangible um, environmental asset that we can turn into a digital asset, but if you don't know where it came from and what it's made of, it loses its value, it loses its clarity. And so this ability to code directly into an individual token, all of the key information of, of, of an ITMO um, was what allowed us to really start trying to put rubber to road on this one. Um, after that inspiration, um, we did realize that the ERC721 wasn't going to quite work. One of our colleagues, Matt Locke here, um, actually created ERC998 to allow crypto-composable crypto non-fungible tokens, um, and that would allow movement of more than one token at a time because that was an issue that befell the crypto kitties was you could only move one at a time. Um, and so we like the ability to have each token be so clear that you, you could find one of these tokens on the ground on the digital ground, pick it up and understand everything about it without its context, just like a crypto kitty, but they needed to be able to move better. Now, as we've moved on, we actually believe that we can use an ERC20 token, um, which has those benefits of fungibility uh, and, and ease of transfer and have enough metadata attached to each of those individual tokens and be able to surface that in a viewer. Um, that we can actually use those tokens rather than the non-fungible tokens, but we owe the non-fungible tokens, the NFTs, a great uh, a thanks, a gratitude for allowing us to see that vision. So those of you who are familiar with, the, with Article 6 and with ITMOs, these units of this system, um, you'll be familiar with these different um, fundamental aspects of a credit. So we need to know, you need to know in an ITMO, you need to know in a tool that you're using under Article 6 in the Paris Agreement, the country of origin, the sectoral scope. So this is an easy number-based system created under the CDM, I think 1 to 15, saying, you know, is this renewable energy? Is this a fuel switch? Is this landfills? Is this forestry? Is this agriculture? Um, and so that creates an easy, an easy field. Project name. This one will be tricky. Um, so to clarify, these are the pieces of the puzzle that we are gonna have built into each token on the blockchain. Um, and that will show up anytime you look at it in a wallet. Um, and also importantly, uh, these will be the uh, pieces of data that will be easily sortable for these bitmos. And I, we get into it a bit later, but basically um, it will be very important and important for the full vision of Article 6 for countries to be, and individuals and businesses and whoever's making rules and whoever's making buy side decisions to be able to sort the ITMOs uh, that are created into the space. Because as we know, under the Paris process, there's a great deal of latitude for every country on the processes that they are going to use to issue Article 6 units. Um, we have no say over what type of stringency rules um, what type of things are going to come out of the negotiations, but we need to have tools where um, market actors and government actors can decide what type of units they want to allow for compliance in their systems and which ones they don't. And so we see that this needs to be built into each token. Vintage, the year generated, individual token number or ID, so every token will have its own individual number. Um, they're actually going to, I don't have it here, but also project number. So where project name might get a little wonky if you've got thousands, millions, eventually, of projects. Um, 
we'll see how that one hammers out, but uh, each project will have its own number as well for, for ease of sorting. Um, now, there's also going to be a pointer to off-chain audit documents, um, perhaps held in centralized repositories at UNFCCC, perhaps hosted, hosted on interplanetary um, IPFC, interplanetary filing, what's the C? Um, it's basically a decentralized data storage um, rather than centralized. Um, and so why we have this here is because um, it's expensive slash takes space and effort to store information on the blockchain. It's a lot easier to just have a, a centralized database and um, people may ask sometimes, you know, why don't we just put it on an old system? Um, I think there's a lot of answers to that. Um, but what we want to do to really s thread the needle here is have key data built right onto the blockchain and have appointed opt-in documents where you can have, um, and I know I'm using more like Article 6.4 or CDM parlance, but you can have your project design document. You can have your validation report, your verification report, all of your issuance documents. So there is a big paper trail, um, and we're really trying to fill this last little mile at the middle of things um, to enable that all to be wrapped up and then transferred from country to country. Um, when we walk through uh, a little click through of our demo, uh, you'll see um, also that we have other fields um, for, for other dApps, for other decentralized apps to plug in to our central wallet where we can link to other systems. So to be really clear, we're not trying to actually really create a registry. We're not trying to do monitoring, reporting, and verification, and that really creation of those initial units um, for two reasons. One, um, we're never going to scoop up all that business and, and put it all under our hat um, because everybody's doing it differently, and, and, and um, there are so many people working in this space already and providing those services, but what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to take handoff um, of a issued credit from um, the Climate Action Reserve, or when Canada starts issuing ITMOs and has a process for um, MRV and issuing those, we want to be able to take that and plug that in. So um, we're going to have those linkages to other systems. Um, the World Bank has been doing some really excellent hard work on building a warehouse mechanism um, because they have their host co their their countries um, and they have projects around the world where those credits are are sitting dormant. Um, because they're waiting for Article 6 to be operationalized um, for that spice to flow. Um, and so uh, we're trying to move that forward and support those other systems in the space. We've talked about um, a lot of this data and a lot of these things that are going to be surfaced. Um, and we're going to have an ITMO dashboard um, where you can see all of these items that were in that last screen. Um, we'll see that a little bit um, on a smartphone app sized uh, interface in a moment. Um, and then we'll have a, um, a bigger breakdown um, in, in the browser where you can really drill into all of these details. Um, and so you can kind of pan out or in depending on the, the details that you need. And so we'll be able to take a look at an individual token. We'll be able to look at a project um, and see all those details. And, and as I said, if we don't have a transparency mechanism for buyers and users of Article 6 units to understand quickly and to be able to sort by the whole plethora of those out in the space, th the system won't work. It won't come to its true promise. So we need to be able to, um, to make that very clear. Um, because if you can't understand that ITMO quality, people will just back away and it won't happen. So um, we are, are, are deeply grateful um, to the Toronto team at Accenture um, for their uh, amazing fast work on helping us put together a clickable demo of our, of our Bitmo platform. I don't know if I introduced the Bitmo concept, but thought long and hard about what can we call these individual tokens. And me and my abject brilliance came up with the idea we could call it a blockchain internationally transferred mitigation outcome. It takes everybody else barely seconds to understand what they're going on about there, but you know sometimes the, it, it's the journey, not the destination. Um, so Accenture was very kind in helping us build this. They did an amazing job. We're very grateful. Um, and we just want to show sort of a simple Bitmo issuance and exchange tool. Um, 
and we really walked through it um, initially as as one of those 196 countries or a CDM 6.4 or sorry a, a Article 6 6.4 CDM Executive Board 2.0 whoever holds the keys to issue units under a 6.4 um, we're sort of viewing from their point of view in the issuance um, so you start off, you, you click in and you're like, all right, would you like to create a wallet um, or import from seed if you already had a wallet? And so this allows a user to create this. Um, next slide. Um, so you put in your password, so you're able to get back into the system and, uh, and then you have your secret backup phrase. So people who are in crypto and blockchain will be intimately familiar with this. Um, not your keys, not your coins, is a, a saying that goes a long way. Um, and it, it, it's both the magic and a significant risk of using a blockchain-based tool for such an important process as this. Um, and uh, we do recognize that, um, uh, that this will be something that, that the UNFCCC and that um, the countries need to gain comfort with and that we'll need to have enough um, control, I don't know if centralization is quite the right thing, but to be able to enable people to get their keys back, to get back into their wallet if they lose it because the value and importance of the assets within them are so critical. Um, so say you click through um, and if you, this is showing a screen of somebody who's clearly already been in here and has 40 million Bitmos in their wallet. Um, and so this screen really shows you your wallet balance up at the top it kindly welcomes you back, um, has a little bit of a, a data on what you've done recently. Um, and it's really neat because um, this will be scrollable down and you can look at your recent transfers or issuances in the system. One of the key aspects to see here is the sort by. So we talked about all those fields. Um, this is gonna allow a wallet holder to sort through and look at their projects. Next slide. Do we have a time check? Yeah, I was thinking you okay. it would be good to have interactive uh, element. In All right. Areas, Alex what says. time is it? It's now 37. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Um, so this is the Bitmo platform, um, and it, you can take a look. So this is if you want to open up and issue tokens. You have your token range, so here somebody's going to issue 500 tokens. They've got their project name. This is actually for a project that we have at Ecotrust Canada, where I work in Vancouver, that hosts uh, the Blockchain for Climate Partnership with this project, um, and uh, it's for a project in Northeast Superior with Indigenous communities there. It's a forestry project, set, sectoral scope 14 under CDM, and this would be our project ID, which is April 27th is also my birthday. Um, Country of Mitigation Canada, this is where you have a link to off-chain documents, and the other climate standards is, is important because this is where it could show what was where did the data come from? Where was all the MRV executed, and where was the you know the, the country standard or whatever, and link back into that? Um, uploading the documents, as we talked about before, you'll need to be able to upload this backup data and all of the uh, audit trail onto here, um, uh, and then have it live with the token. Um, this is uh, sort of a list of your latest transactions, so you'll be able to send and receive. Bitmos from your wallet. Um, we also, right now, have sort of got your your um, your wallet addresses. Eventually, we hope to have ENS Ethereum naming system tool for identifying the countries and entities. So you could have Canada, you know, Canada or Canada's Bitmo account. Um, along the bottom, importantly, there's a global view of projects in the wallet. Um, a tool to issue the Bitmos. You can click on that. There's a transact Bitmo view documentation in my account. Um, this is um, this is all the other stuff, and so we wanted to have a core of a wallet to hold the, the Bitmos and an ability to issue the Bitmos so for people to be able to see that. But these are the other pieces of the puzzle, and we see them as linked DApps, um, decentralized apps that feed in and out of the wallet. So we have our wallet. The Bitmo transaction log is really exciting because that will be where we take a country's inventory all of the transfers that have been made under this system, and then whether they have a positive or negative corresponding adjustment, um, and then also be able to view their NDC. And so this becomes a rich place for information for all of the countries to 
see how they're progressing on the process and have that be very transparent, our units enable that clarity around the corresponding adjustments there. Um, there's also BITMO scan um, that allows you to look at each BITMO. We put in here the World Bank, ITMO Warehouse, the International Continental Exchange. Um, you notice that we haven't talked about money. We don't have a market making mechanism in here. We're not trying to be an exchange. We are the tool to issue and move these um, and really retire these ITMOs so that they show up as corresponding adjustments and they'll plug into these other systems um, should we be so fortunate. It is fun to think about also looking at a decentralized exchange to enable these things. Um, Co-creation process. Um, it's under development. It's exciting to have people engaged in this with us. Um, one of the important things, we're building a national party working group to engage with the future users who are really the countries. We need them on board to help us understand what they want to see in this tool, what they're allergic to, learn from their expertise, and build them as champions um, so that they can say, if you build this, we would like to use it and hopefully push that onwards into the UNFCCC system. If you or anybody you know is connected to national parties um, that might be interested in seeing these tokens move quickly, interested in blockchain, interested in buying or selling because they've got credits ready to be made or they need them for their NDCs, please let us know. Um, so finally, um, as I've mentioned, we have a 20-person team um, for people from climate, blockchain geekery, energy governance. We're in Vancouver, Toronto, Copenhagen, San Francisco. Um, so far we've been self-funded through the resources of its members and so people volunteer their time and also their money or their organizational know-how and support to get to these conferences, to, to be where we need to be to make this happen. We are deeply grateful for funding support from the Royal Bank Foundation, the RBC Foundation in Canada, um, who have given us um, funding to help build aspects of this out and also look at the very specific Canadian deployment of a blockchain and how Canada can optimize this new tool to do the work it needs to do um, for Article 6 and Paris. Um, and I also have to make this pitch, if you or anyone you know has access to philanthropic money, who wants to fund something like this, please let us know. Um, our partner in the partnership, EcoTrust Canada, is a national charity in Canada, and so we, we are able to take charitable donations through them um, and are very grateful for their support and engagement and, and their skill set um, and my time as an employee of theirs as well um, to do this.